All Thank right. You, well, yay. Good afternoon, Danielle. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm How are you doing, Thomas? <laughs> great, great. Danielle D'Andrea. This is my first um, pop star singer. I, I say first pop star because I saw that your last uh, YouTube mm. crazy went over four million. It was kind of crazy. Huh? Yeah. It went crazy. <laughs> it has gone crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first for me to have something with that much, that many views. That's crazy. Yeah, that's but the, band, I thought the I... band is a big band. So yes. Yeah. Uh, in America. It was a big <laughs> band, but uh, I noticed how you got them going with you. And, you know. Well, we actually, when we did that, I got there on the day. Yes. And I met half of the band on the day. Wow. And we had five minutes to work out how we we're going to do it. And as we were working it out, half of the crew packed up their gear and said, we're going to the street. They've never done one to the street. That was the first one. Wow. And I said, what? And they said, we don't have a permit and we've got t uh, 40 minutes before the sun goes down. Yes. So we went out to the street. I couldn't hear myself. They couldn't hear themselves. The guy recorded it on his computer in behind the drummer. Yes. Everybody thinks it's in the, in the studio, but it was a live recording. No. That was the second take. And I wasn't sure how it was going to work. And it worked out fantastically. Wow. Even, yeah. even my son <coughs> said, that's, that's studio recording. Nope. Wow. Everybody's been oh, asking. Well. Everybody's been questioning us. That was live. I'm going to tell him yeah, how wrong he was. I live. should have bet I, I would have made some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of band. They do four, they do four in a day. And wow. I was the last one. They do one for every, every week and they do four every Sunday. Right. So, yeah. so Daniel. <clears throat> yeah. Just tell us a little bit about you. Oh, wow. Well, I'm a singer, yes. songwriter. Uh, I grew up in Sydney, Australia. Yes. My mum was an incredible dance teacher and she had a performance studio and she basically willed me to be a singer, I believe. She married a musician. Yes. And all of his family sing. My mother could sing too, but she was told she couldn't, so she never did. Oh, wow. See? But I'd always hear her in the house and, you know. So she apparently, when she was pregnant with me, she rab rubbed her belly and said, please be a singer, please be a singer. And then one day she was dancing in some venue and this French singer they brought out from, from France, of course. Her name was, I think, Danielle de Vries. Oh, or Danielle wow. de something. And she went, I'm going to call my daughter Danielle. And so she named me after a singer. And then as a child, I, I heard great music playing and I was always singing and I learned piano and I learned violin. And she just gave me all these different tools without me even realising, or her realising, I think. She played yeah. great music yes. around the house always from... Frank Sinatra to Ella Fitzgerald to Stevie Wonder to the great classical music to musical theatre. It was always being played around me. So I had this great, great stuff that was, I was just soaking up without even realising. Right. And then I would always sing and she'd say, just keep singing, just keep singing, let the world hear you. And I would cry sometimes when she'd make me sing at the dancing school concert, she'd make me sing and I'd go, I don't want to sing, I want to dance. She could be so good at singing. I said, but I'm good at dancing too. And she goes, yes, but... <laughs> so eventually, when I was 17, one day I went, like I did full-time ballet, I did everything to, try to be the dancing teacher. And at 17, I said, I think I want to sing now. And she was so excited. So the first thing I did ever was I went on Star Search in Australia to get a good video, like a TV video of me singing. Just right. to, you know. And I got to the semi-finals, which was great. And I f my, one of the judges was Glenn Shorrock from the Little, R Little River Band, you know? No. LRB. They had very big hits here in the 70s and, big, and, and in, um, in America. Do you know Reminiscing? Friday night, it was late. I was walking you home. We got down to the gate. Yeah. I was dreaming of the night. Reminiscing. Anyway, wow. big Australian yes, yes, band. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. He was judging me wow. on Star Search. And, he gave me, and I went and worked with him in his show called One for the Money. He was touring. And that was my first thing. And I haven't, I've sung since then, teaching, gigs, singing commercials, you know, touring, yep. singing as a solo artist, singing backings for other people. And I, that's how I started with Glenn Shorrock. So he gave me my first break. Right, I, I understand that. But your mother never pushed you into singing. No. She pushed you into dancing. No, I wanted to dance. You wanted to she dance. She had a dancing teacher. And yes. she was, I was just, we just had to go. She was the dancing teacher. We all went. My brothers, my sister, and myself, we all went and did it every, you know. <laughs> right. And I was good. I can still tap dance. Yes. Um, I love dancing. So, it's really so what great. was the click? There has to be a teacher or someone that made you realize, no, stop your dancing. Just get into singing because it's good to say at 16 or 17 I decided to sing. But well, has I to think be the click was for me, um, I auditioned for something which was you had to sing and dance. Right. And it was for, you know, Australia's Wonderland? It's like Disneyland. It's closed now, but it was a big theme park when they first opened it. Yes, yes. And they were going to have those shows. And I auditioned and I got in. 
And at the same time, I auditioned for this other show which was just to sing in. And it was in a club show, but it was working with people that my, much older than me that auditioned me and they wanted a young singer that could move a bit and act a bit. And I had to choose between doing the Wonderland show yep. or doing this. And I chose to go with the tour. And from that moment on, I kind of went, I think I like this more because the dancing world is not a very nice world. Backstage, it's okay. very bitchy and right, I'm allowed right. to say, but it's a lot a of competition. Yeah, it's a lot of competition well, yeah. and it's not very real. There's like, I mean, if you see it now, TV shows about dance mums and all that, it's not very, it's not, not a nice energy. Right. And um, where I learned to dance with my mother's school, she didn't have mirrors. Like most dancing schools have mirrors. She had no mirrors. So you could feel what you were doing from your soul and you could be you. Oh, wow. And she would stand in front of you and dance. And the only time she had mirrors was for ballet when we had to learn proper things. And she'd pull the mirrors out. Yes. And stand up and go, now when you're doing this, and I think that was, I think mirrors are detrimental to a lot of people because they copy and they try to look like the other person. Then they're looking at themselves. Instead of, it's the same with singing. When I teach my people to sing, I say, close your eyes. Because when you use your ears, you lose the sense of this. Yes. And the ears are stronger. Why do we think Jose Feliciano, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, why were they so great? Because there's no, when you close your eyes, there's no, you don't see, there's no judgment. It's all about from here. Yes, what I understand. What you feel in here. I understand. And here. That's what I do when I'm teaching. Mm, Lock mm, the mm, ears. Mm, 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 mm. Um, and how did I get into that? Point? You have a lot of energy. No, that's, Too much I, was energy ask, I was asking, I was asking, yeah, how did you get into singing? <clears throat> so, so, so what my mum did was, though, she took me to this wonderful singing teacher. His name was Bob Tasman Smith. God rest his soul. He was such a beautiful teacher and he taught lots of opera singers and lots of theatrical singers and people that did more of the club acts and the cabaret. And he had me for 45 minutes. I'd go there every week. And he was one of those teachers that never stopped me doing what I wanted to do because I didn't come, I didn't want to do theatre. I didn't want to do opera. I wanted to do the pop and the latest R&B stuff. And he would teach me all of the exercises first yep. for my placement, which still I do use today. And then at the end of the lesson, he would say, he would, I remember he would sit back in his chair, put his hands behind his head, and he'd go, what did you bring for me? And I would bring my latest backing track of the latest Top 40 song. And, he'd, and I would just sing for him and he'd go, marvellous, darling, marvellous. <laughs> and so he taught me how to sing correctly, so I wasn't doing any damage on my voice. And he really, really helped me. And there's a lot of exercises that I learned from him that I have used in, with my students, myself now, even oh, in wow. my workshops. Okay. Lovely Absolutely. little things for agility and just to feel good about singing, you know. And I've met people since that say, oh my gosh, I used to go to Bob Tasman and I would try and get there a little bit early so I could wait in the other room just to hear you singing. <laughs> it was so sweet. For inspiration. That, that's why I started learning with him and then I went on Star Search. So. Yes, and then <laughs> you've left Australia. You, you yes, don't I leave in Australia. Los, I live yes? in Los Angeles. Yes, you leave uh -huh. it. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so when did you leave? 2006. Okay. The last day Just of to better your career? I was, I had done a lot of things here. Yes. And done a lot of things overseas. And I'd been on a television show here for four years on the ABC. Right. Club Buggery, it was called. Club Buggery, Yes, yeah. with Roy and HG. And then I made a jazz record. And then I did sessions. And yes. then I toured with John Farnham for 10 years. And I kind of got to that point where I thought, I want to do more. And I feel a bit stifled. And I feel if I stay here... I'm going to become, get on that merry-go-round merry of being comfortable and become that little bit cabaret and I'm going to get the gigs and I'm going to do all that and have my money and have my nice house. And yep. I wanted more. I had more to do. I wanted to work with other people. So I thought I'm going to move to Los Angeles and yep. pack my bags, my two suitcases, thinking my first husband was coming with me, but that's another story. Yep. Got there, landed, and had to start again completely like wow. because I lost a lot when I... When I left my first marriage, I lost a lot of stuff, but I gained so much more from that because all the stuff that I lost is only monetary. Uh, well, you you so said you wanted more, so you got everything to, to restart. From I started again, <laughs> and no one knew, no, I didn't have a history there. Yes. And what was amazing is that I went to places to sing where, you know, I, got, I would go into these little gigs or I'd get someone would ask me to get up and sing, and I was told when I come to America to not do the thing that the Australians do and go, oh, I'm not, I don't want to sing because of the tall poppy syndrome. You know, the whole, yep. people say, you good? Oh, I'm all right. Whereas in America, you good? Yeah, I am. This is what I do. That's what they are over there. Mm -mm, mm. So if someone asked me to sing in America, I went, okay, I will. And every time I did, people were like, who, who are you? Why don't we know of you? You know, and I said, I'm Danielle and nice to meet you, you know. <laughs> um, and so that was a really great thing for me to, to, to be in an, 
in a place where you go and do shows or gigs or get up and sing a song and people were coming up to me that, for example, I did a show once and the whole, I was the only white person on stage and the white person there. And I was doing you know, R&B and Stevie Wonder songs and people were, like the brothers and the sisters were coming up to me and they were like, who are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, it was like, oh, wow, I had validation from, from the people that know. <laughs> you know I, what I've I mean? I've heard your voice. I yeah. know you can. But, I, you know, he, hearing it from them, I've never yeah. performed like that. It's, I've yeah. lived in Australia. I've performed, you know, we're, we're mostly Greeks. I mean, I'm, I'm half Lebanese as well, so I have that inside of me, which helps with the singing too. Right. Um, right. And all my family sang and they're all musical. Okay. So that's, I'm, very, I'm lucky that I have a natural gift for it. But I've pursued it and I have to keep working on my craft to get better and better and better because you stay the same if you don't keep doing it. This so is are you are you meaning to say to me <coughs> that you're, once you're a singer, there's more training? Always, to always you have to do it. Mm. If you look at the greats that are still doing it now, Tony Bennett, Bonnie Raitt, for example, Tony Bennett's in his 90s, I think now, and he's still singing in the same keys that he was when he was in his 20s. Bonnie Raitt is late 60s. She is still working on it. You've got to keep doing it because this is a muscle. People don't realise that the throat is a muscle. And like any kind of exercise, if you're a tennis player, if you're a runner, if you stop doing it and you go back to doing it, it's going to take you a while to get back to where you were. And this muscle, as we get older, the muscle gets lower for singers. We, our voice is lower. Right. So I have to keep working my muscle. Plus, like stretching it. Plus, I have to keep working on my craft because i got to get better. You, you what do you mean you can get better? You can get I don't better. Say, what, once the voice has, has hit that pure note, you, you, there's no better. Oh, you can it's keep working on stuff. Oh, yes, you can. I'm still working on stuff. I'm working out ways to do things differently. And, wow, if I do it like this, I can get it from there and then I won't hurt my voice there and bring it down here. You've, you've got to keep working on it. You've right. got to keep it fresh. You've got to keep listening to all the different kind of music. If I'm working with everybody that's all different ages... I have to keep doing that because it's it's my duty to that, to my, what I do, to my craft and to the people that I'm working with. And I find a lot of people get famous and they have everybody around them that just says yes, 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 yes. And no one's going, hey, just so you know, that last show you did wasn't as good as the one before or you sang out of tune there or you need to watch that bit there. You need those people around you. Oh, this is fantastic because I train salespeople <coughs> and leaders man, and people who run shows. And I keep on telling them, we have to train every day. It doesn't matter what we do. Oh, with my goodness. Craft, Are you it's something me? you do every day. Always. And so now for them to hear that a singer does that? You have to. Not every singer does it. And that's my point. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that I love that growing up listening to that were my idols. And then I go to see them now and it's like, well, you're still good, but you're still where you were then. And to me, you're up there. And now I'm above you, if really, without sounding like a big head. Yep. You know, like you've got to keep working on your craft. That's right. the number one thing to me. Okay. Especially, especially with professional singers. Now, one of the reasons I do a lot of these uh, podcasts is be, I'm always on the lookout for people who seem ordinary. And I can tell you, you're, <coughs> you're not ordinary, but I, I, I'm trying I to am. label you, right? I know you and, But those people, they've got something in them, something like a, a song that they have to sing now. And they managed to achieve what I call the extraordinary. And, and I believe you've got a new project that you're coming out with, right? Yes, I do. And that project is Let the World Let Hear Let the World ya. Hear Where's that coming from? Okay, my mother. Yes. It came from her. That actual saying came from my mother. Right. I would sing sometimes and some of my brothers or sisters would, would, would go, be quiet, because I was constantly singing. It was annoying Right. in the house, constantly <laughs> singing all the time, singing to Stevie, practicing my runs. And they'd be like, can you please be quiet? And mum would always grab my hand and she'd go, let the world hear you, darling. Let the world hear you. In the car, she'd lean across and go, let the world hear you. She would even be so proud sometimes when I was singing along to the radio and I'd work out the harmony. We'd get to the traffic lights and she'd wind down the window so the people next to her could hear me, you know, and i go, Mum! <laughs> she wanted everybody to hear me, you know. Yep. And it wasn't until she passed, sadly, two years ago, that I realised what she was really talking about. Right. She wanted me to sing for the world and let them hear me and to help the world. So we decided to call the company Let the World Hear You. Wow. I have a bracelet with her writing engraved in the bracelet that says Let the World Hear You. And because she's passed and she was an incredible dance teacher and kind of like a life coach for a lot of people for over 50 years, I want to keep her legacy going. And instead of doing it through a dancing school, I'm doing it through what I do, which is what she wanted me to do. Right. And I'm letting the world hear me and it's in my mother's legacy. So I'm, it's to do with mum and me and my cousin was my mother's niece is also running it with me. So it's a family thing. So we started it in the, in the church hall, dancing hall, where I first started. When I, mum, mum used to take me in the bassinet 
and let, sit me on top of the piano for the ballet students and I would sleep all day. Right. And I le learned dancing there. That was my preschool. I learned my very first group singing class there. Then I started teaching there. Then I started teaching singing there. Then she had to, then they knocked the hall down and she had to move. And then when I came back last year, they'd refurbished the whole hall. And I thought, wouldn't it be beautiful to start this whole thing where I started? And we went and checked out the hall and it's all been refurbished. And it was the most therapeutic thing walking into that place. It was unbelievable, the feeling. And everybody that came, some people used to learn dancing there when they were children, hadn't been back oh, in because wow. they were scared. To, they were emotional about my mother not being there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, and for everybody, it was just like, wow. So we have two in that same space on tomorrow in Coogee. But today right. we have the one in, in Borkham Hills. So yep. yeah. I'm trying to do this for the world. And I'm just starting slowly for where, where I started from. So tell us a little bit <clears> what <throat> you want to achieve with this. I believe everybody can sing. If you're born screaming, then you can sing because screaming is just making a note. Even when you talk to your children, if they're being naughty or doing something you don't want them to do and you go, get over here, that's a note. People don't realise. And when you put it like that yeah. and you get them to say that and then you go, right, just hold that note one, just say, get, and they go, get, oh, there you're singing. I, be, I believe some people's ears need to be trained better, but we can all sing if we're born speaking. And I've proven it time and time again now with my students in America and here in Australia, with children and with adults. I'm not saying I'm making them sing well enough to be going on The Voice or a singing competition. I'm saying to sing as a therapy because we're all, I believe, are meant to do it. We're all born with this gift. We just learn have to, need to learn how to unlock the gift. Yep. And it goes deep, deep, deep because it's such a deep thing when you sing. It's connected to everything. And when you can unlock that, it's a natural therapy for everybody and it makes you feel incredible. And, and it's hard at first for some people to unlock that, especially women that are too scared to sing out in their big voice. They'll sing in the quiet voice, like this choir, you know, the <laughs> choir voice. Yep. And I want them to sing. And even if you lose your voice that night and you've let it go, do it. It's mm -hmm. really good for you, you know. So when <clears> you're talking <throat> about therapy, would you like to talk a bit more about it? Yeah. Like, what is it? We, we letting go of our internal We're letting internal go of a lot hurt. of things. I know personally, yes. when I had the car accident that I told you about and I couldn't sing because my both, both my wrists were broken and fractured ribs, I yeah, hadn't sung. Which happened, it. what is it? How many years 2006. ago? 2006. Okay. Uh, sorry, 2007. Yes. Um, and I was in plaster cast in America too, in the American, American uh, medical system, which is not fun at all after being raised in Australia. <laughs> I had a doctor called Dr. Song. Uh, Dr. Song, he was Korean, he couldn't speak any English, but right. his name was Dr. Song and I went, cool. <laughs> That's a sign, you know. And he fixed my wrists up and I had, I had to learn how to use my hands again and everything. And the therapist, the hand specialist I went to said, it's gonna take six months of you coming here three times a week, three hours at a time. And I went, okay. But in my head I went, no, it's not. And after seven weeks, he said, you've graduated. So uh, six, from six months to seven weeks, I did it in. Wow. I took none of those drugs they give you in America, you know, for pain and stuff, because I, I wanted to feel the pain so I could heal naturally. And at night, sometimes it would get a bit painful. So I would just, you know, had the Panadol, you know, something like that. Yep. Because I don't drink. I've never drunk alcohol. Neither did my mother. So it's, oh, not, wow. it's, not, it's not a thing of me, you know, becoming sober. Right. It's just, I think I'm allergic to it. I don't like it doesn't make me feel well when I have a sip of something. So I've yep. never been a drinker. Hang on, what was the question? The therapy. Oh, the therapy. Yeah. So, okay, I'll give you an example. Yep. I had a student in America when I first started teaching privately from my house in, in Los Angeles. A student, a man, he was in his 50s and he was absolutely terrified. And his wife sourced me through a musician friend of mine. And she messaged me and she said, I really would love to buy my husband some singing lessons because as a child, he was in the choir at school he was wonderful. His whole family played piano. They loved to sing. Something happened. His voice broke. I don't know what it is, but I really would like to give him like a course of some singing lessons with you. But can we just start with one? I said, absolutely. So he came to my house and the first lesson, the fear of this, this poor darling, the fear that he had of just, I'm going to sing in front of somebody, was you could just see it, you know. And so I said to him, I want you to know there's no judgment in this room. There's no love. And this is not a teacher student thing. We're just going to sing together. And it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. It doesn't matter if you can't get the note because it's just singing. And the first lesson, the majority of the lesson he spent in the other room because he was too scared to sing in front of me. Oh, my goodness. But he came out by the end of the lesson. Then he started coming every week. He now comes to see me for two hours every week and doesn't see his therapist <laughs> as much. And by the end of six months, he made an EP for, of Christmas songs and gave it to all his family. Okay. So, okay. Yep. 
<coughs> that was huge for him. And now I teach his daughter and his son and his wife. Okay. So what? What? So <coughs> I understand it. So I unlocked his fear. You unlocked his fear of singing. A lot of things, I think. I think right. there's a few things that have helped him. He said, if I didn't have you to sing every week, you know, I said, but you don't need to have me every week because I've given you the tools. You just need to have a place and a space to feel comfortable to do it and go and do it again. Yes, you. because you don't want to become the drug yourself. No, and I, I can't. I mm, can't mm. be there all the time for everybody. No. Because I'm, I don't have a degree in this. This is just something I've learned from what I do. Maybe you're safe because you don't have a degree. Maybe. <laughs> Getting points, degrees are to me like, you know, it's just, I, I think that a degree, it's wonderful that you can get your college degree and do all that, but it's just, you read a book and then things change in five years and we've got to keep growing. And I've always, I grew up believing that I wasn't very smart because I didn't, didn't get my degree. I didn't finish school, you know, I finished in year 10, went to business college, did full-time ballet and then started to do the singing. But my life, what I've learned from life, the degrees of that, yeah. of living in all the different places and meeting people and working with people and doing what I do, I feel like I've got a degree in, in life. Not in everything, definitely with my singing and um, working with people, I feel like I'm really getting better at it. No, I, th I think you're, you're <coughs> already there. Danielle, I, I met you just earlier this, mo uh, this afternoon and I had to say there was that aura of calmness around really? you. That, that's instant. That, you that, 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 that was instant. You have an, uh, an aura of someone who's quite transparent. Uh, and a big giver. And, and I think you don't need any degree for that. That allows you to tap into a lot of people's heart instantly. That's what know? it means for me. Thank you yes. so much for saying so that. I, it's so I, I, I can see that. Now, what about, you, you're doing mm -hmm. the two sessions today, uh -huh. and, and I think tomorrow too. So it's first session for children. Yes. And then... That only goes for an hour. Yes. And then I have an adult's one for an hour and a half. Okay, so uh -huh. and this is the beginning of what you're doing. And, and, and I love this bit. It's that... So you, with the children, you're teaching them how to sing, but also how to feel confident about themselves, I believe, then. Yeah. Okay. It's all about just getting in a room and having fun. And um, if, they, if they believe that I'm at their level and I really try to have fun with them and, yep. and not be, I'm the teacher and you're the student, you yep. know? And the, way I, the first way I do that is we all sit down. That's how we start the lesson. I'm sitting and they're sitting. So we're on equal, you know? Yep. Um, and nobody has to sing on their own, only if they want to. And by the, usually by the end of the lesson, they're all... Oh, can I have a go? Can I have a go? You know, mm -hmm. um, and it's just to unlock their little fear because so many children are just told they can't do it, or they, someone laughs at them at school for seeing one little thing wrong. That can stay with them for their life. What something that happened at school, some trauma that laughed, someone said to them, "You can't sing," or someone laughed when they sang. That sticks with them forever, and that's terrible because one little thing did that, yeah. and that's not true. Mm -mm. Just because they might have got it straight the first time, you know, it's really parents say it to their children, "I'll oh, be quiet. You sound terrible." You can't do it. Parents, if you're listening, always tell them to keep going. Just have another go. Yep. Oh, that was good, you know. <laughs> I'm not saying everyone's going to be a star. Like, not, not everybody's going to get an award like they do now. Everyone gets an award for everything and a trophy. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can come, can come first. But yes. this, is a, this is something that we can all do. We might not be the best at it, but wouldn't it be good if we could use that tool to grab something that doesn't cost us anything because we're talking and it comes from within us. Yep. If we can all have a bit of a sing every day for five or ten minutes... Like people go and do their yoga, make it part of your practice, wouldn't that be wonderful? Because you're going to get let go of a whole lot of stuff. But to get to that place, you've got to feel comfortable in doing that. Yeah. So you've got to unlock that fear, and that's what I'm trying to do. Yes. So and so in many ways, <coughs> to teach young children from a uh, very young age, obviously, to be in touch with their true self yeah. and to be transparent yeah. and allowing... Uh, themselves just to flow without any restriction either from education or yeah. from the environment. Yeah, and to feel okay about making a mistake. Yeah. You know, yeah. like singing a wrong note. You know, like just for example, on my show the other night, yep. we started a song yep. and the guitarist messed up the intro and you could see he was freaking out. <laughs> and then the whole band freaked out and I went, can we just stop? Yep. Because with us trying to cover up that we've all made a mistake, everybody knows Let's just start again because yep. we're all human, right? And this is just making music. And everybody relaxed in the audience. Everybody relaxed on stage. He did a great on intro and then the song was even better because we're human. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so important. We're, gonna, we're not always going to be perfect when we sing, when the note comes out. But if you have a go, you're going to feel so much better. Yeah. A lot of women that I have, when they sing in their chest voice for the first time, they cry. Their eyes fill up and they cry because it's all connected. What do you mean it's all connected? The, 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 the mind... It's connected this to was all connected to all mm -hmm. to everything, especially with women. It's very, very connected. I want to get more women to my, my classes. 
because there's so much pent up stuff. Women that have children. And now we're talking about the adult stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The kids so, are easy so that's to get a second to. The kids group. are really easy because yeah. once I get in and I start doing some fun stuff with them, I'm like, "Come on, let's groove." They go, "Let's groove," and we start singing. They're like, "Oh yeah," and then we stand on the chairs, and she's just a big kid, like <laughs> a big version of us. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's easy with the children. With the adults, yeah. Uh, There's more hang-ups. <laughs> of course, they've been through all their life, been told things, been to have to do it this way. You've got to do it this way. I've created my own singing lessons by doing things the way I want to do it and the way I find people love to do it. And it's not the way you're taught by a choir teacher with a piano, going do this scale. None of that. I don't use any music. I need the very end. It's all us just singing. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, but I noticed that. I mean, you can just hit any note. Yes, but that's then unfair. so can the people in the lessons. That's unfair. You wait. <laughs> Come and do my workshop, you'll be able to do it too. All right, so with these <coughs> adults here, what, so what do we have? Uh, what, what's the... Because everyone's so busy these days and, and, you know, when people are listening to this, they're probably thinking, uh, well, you know, singing, what is singing going to do and put food on the table? But a lot of people don't realise they actually living a, 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 a life of slavery, a, a life, a slavery to the old conditioning, slavery maybe to maybe some old hurts. Of Do you course. think that singing can unlock all these things? I think it's, that singing can definitely help all of it. Right. Um, there's so much hurt in so many people and I think everybody has their own story and it doesn't mean that their story is worse than somebody else's because everyone's got their own stuff, you know, and it's, their, it's bad to them. Yep. Uh, I feel like when everybody's in a group and you finally get together, especially the adults, for example, my, my workshop that I did last time, we, had, we were sitting in a semicircle and everybody was sitting down and everybody had some nerves. What are we doing here? Are we all going to sing in front of everybody? I'm a bit scared. They, you could feel it. And I start the class by letting everybody know there's no judgment, there's just love. And yes. we have cups of tea and we have chocolate for everybody at the end. Singing releases an endorphin that makes you feel happy naturally. Wouldn't it be good if we all just sang every day and we didn't have to have anything else to make us feel happy? If we could undo that endorphin naturally without having to pop a pill or have a drink to numb the pain, it's really, really important. And it's a natural thing we've been given that we don't use because we've been told we can't or we sound terrible. So I would like to be able to unlock the fear in everybody so that they can get up in the day or sing in their car and when they're singing in their car, not stop singing as soon as someone else gets in. Because <laughs> of the freedom with the windows wound up. Yeah, I'm going to sing. No one can hear me. How good do you feel? Mm -mm. But isn't that a great therapy? Even if you just do that, keep your windows wound up, put the radio on and just have a sing. No one's hearing you. Sing. You know they say dance like nobody's, listen nobody's watching? Mm -hmm. Sing like nobody's listening. Just have a sing and let it out. Because it's unlocking of this other stuff. I can't explain it. No, but I, I, I can explain <coughs> a little bit. Like, you know, I, I find that um, singing or learning how to sing has actually taught me to reconnect with my true self. Absolutely. And it's, it's an amazing thing. Maybe not the first time I have a go. Maybe the second time, the third song or the fourth song, you know. And I notice that within about 20 to 25 minutes m myself that that need to wear a mask suddenly is relinquished. Absolutely. That, that need to try and be something in the world because you have a, a role to fulfill mm -hmm. disappears. Mm -hmm. Now, what if people say, well, that's easy for her to say. She probably has no problem in her life that, and, 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 and she's been groomed by a mother into dancing and singing. She's got lucky. What would you tell them? I mean, those people who think that you've got no problems. I've got so many. We've all got problems, let me tell you. And there's right. a lot of stuff in my life right now that's not, not great. But right. I think the reason why I've been able to keep going Yes. It's because I'm singing and I just really feel like this is, this is what's in all of us. I know I do it more naturally and it's my career and I sing on stage and all of that. I know right. that. Right. But I've seen in people, all of my students in Los Angeles, my students here, I've seen a difference after the first lesson and they, the way they hold my hand, look at me in the eye, they just, I cannot believe, I can't believe that I did what I did with you today. Thank you so much. The last workshop that I did, three ladies came they signed up online after seeing me do a show, thinking they were coming to watch me do a show. And when they got there, the girl that was running it said, hello, and they're like, what's going on? And she goes, this is the workshop you're here to sing. Like, oh, oh, no, 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 we don't want to sing. <laughs> and she went, well, in you go, you've paid now. So they all sat down. Within the first 20 minutes, we all sat down. First 20 minutes, we stood up and did the same exercise that we were doing sitting down. Once we stood up and sang it and then sat back down again, I had them in the palm of my hand. They wanted to try every little thing. I had them grooving, had them singing in three-part harmony. I had them clapping on the two and four. It was wonderful. I've, put, I've got videos on my page of it doing it. It's wild. Right, it's okay. Wild. So it's not about singing that they're going to do. They're going to be learning quite a few techniques. 
Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're with a group and everybody's supporting of one another. So it's not like she's better than me. He, you know what I mean? It's not one no, of those things. No, you wouldn't allow that anyway. I don't want that. No. No. This is, we're all equal. We are all equal. Mm. That's what I really believe. Yeah, I find it, you're, you're <coughs> quite a giver. Do, do you find that sometimes you just have to be careful being such a giver because yes, people Yes, my husband's always going, down. be careful, be careful, be careful. You're giving so much stuff and it's really beautiful that you're giving, but protect yourself because there's people that are going to take as much as they can and then put some stuff onto you. Yeah. And that's happened and it does happen. So I have I wear my crystals because I'm, I'm very flighty and I've got to try and stay grounded because I'm very, very open and I love to give everything to everybody. Yes. And I think that's how we should be. Mm, you know what I, I mean? Understand, I understand that. But um, at times you've got to pull back a little bit and give yourself some stuff just that I can keep doing what I want to do, you know. One other thing, yep. When I'm teaching my workshops, yes. I really like to do the different kinds of exercises. They, they're, it's kind of like tricking them because yes. they think they're just doing something fun, but it's actually something that's going to help them with their agility, with their ad-libbing and with them singing open in their chest voice. Which is what good teachers do all the time. Isn't yeah. It? They pretend so they're doing not la, teaching. La, 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 la. We yeah. do la. It's an all an open vowel, which is much harder, which is just using the muscle. But I'll do things like, I love, love, love you. And then they sing it back to you. So as well as singing something that's really lovely, they're also singing about love. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So there's a different message in that we're not singing a lyric from a song we're just singing i love 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 you and then they repeat it then we go yep. to the next one i love 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 you you know what i mean we yep. just keep going up the scale so we're singing up higher and higher and higher and it's about love and it's in a group it's that's the kind of thing i try to do i try to write little exercises because all of my exercises have come from me and from being on the road and touring and working out what works best yes but i try and write things like that that are going to make them feel better about what they're singing and what they're saying, um, and in turn learning something and also working on their instrument. Wow. It's a little trick, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. But it's all about love, isn't it? Always about That's love. That's you, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's why I sign off everything with love and chocolate. So even the... <laughs> what do you mean by that? Every, every email yes. is either love, peace and chocolate, peace and chocolate or love and chocolate. <laughs> That's my signature. I want to have a chocolate in my own name eventually. <laughs> you know those people that want their own shoes and perfume? Yes. I want my own chocolate. All right. Yeah. That's not difficult. Go to Belgium. Exactly. <laughs> I want the good chocolate, you know. So I give out chocolate at all my workshops. Yes. So and what's so. great is that um, I've discovered a new thing. My last workshop that I just did with children, I had 27 children right. on Thursday. And in the lesson, not all of them wanted to sing on their own. And when I was saying goodbye to them, I had my furry friends. And I said, I've got, some, I've got a little deal I'll make. You can all have two each if you sing thank you each time, one at a time. So I got the chocolates and I went, thank you. And they'd go, thank you. <laughs> and if I really got to go, thank you, baby. And they go, thank you, baby. They all did it. Yeah. And they all walked out of there. And mothers have been calling her school going, Who, what, what? my daughter's different this afternoon. My child is different. What's happened? Who did you have in there? You see? Yeah. That was an hour and a half. Yeah. Done in an hour and a half. And you don't need to do it every week. You just got to let them keep doing it. At home, singing, you know. I don't believe a child has to have a singing lesson every single week. I believe that you'd have to, especially children, just give them some tools, go home and practice it, have a little sing every day, open up your vo voice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just do it every day and know you can. It's showing them that they can do it. That's what it's about. Today, today, it's more, than, more important than ever. Oh, it's so important. Mm -hmm. So important with what's going on in the world, everywhere around us. You know, we have to. If you think about back in the day, we didn't have this, the English language. We chanted. Right? Everybody chanted. Yeah. Sorry if that noisy. Um, imagine, could, uh, like a dream of mine is, imagine if we could set aside a minute in, around the planet or in a state or in one country where we're going, everybody, at this time, this is what we're going to do. We're all going to sing this note. Mm, or yeah, just for a second. And think about love and nothing else and peace. What would that do to the energy of that time? Because I know when I'm in the hall with the people, how the energy shifts. Yep. 25 people in a very short amount of um, space of time. I would love to be able to do that with everybody. I'd love to do a festival and have everybody in the audience singing with me because at festivals, they're all there to have a good time. So they've left their worries at home anyway. Yep. So you already have them already there and then you're going to sing with them. How ama amazing would that be? Yep. Whenever you see anything with groups of people singing in concerts, love, 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 like, you know, it's incredible. And you walk out of the audience and everyone's like, oh, how great was that? You know? <laughs> That's how people feel at, at the end of my shows because I always get them to sing with me at the end of my shows. Mm. I bring the band down and they finish it with me. I get the audience to finish singing with me. The band has stopped. 
I think mm. I really believe that what you're doing for people is great. And I, I don't believe that um, people realize it because they, they don't associate they singing to, 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 yes, to being probably like transparent, to being true, real living. Yes, but, but if you remember being a child or having someone sung to you or singing to your child in the crib, it's beautiful. You play the music, you sing to the child. There's a certain energy. It's really important. Yeah. Really important. Music is so important. If you look at videos with people that have Alzheimer's disease, they don't talk, they don't connect with anything. I've seen it. People put headphones on their ears and they play a song from the 30s, which was their era, and all of a sudden the person comes to life. Yeah. Music can take you to so many places and we're meant to have it in our lives. I've met people that don't ever have music. They don't play music. I have a student that's never heard music who I'm unlocking right now. Wow. And it's unbelievable. Within two two-hour lessons, what we've achieved. Unbelievable. You have to unlock it. Maybe you should be talking to the government directly and uh, persuade them. How? <laughs> huh? Which government? <laughs> no, because... There's a lot of governments <laughs> that don't want us to be free. <laughs> in, 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 listen, <clears throat> in, in teaching people about leadership or about being themselves, I, what I talk about is that quite often we live in the brain. We live in where there's fear. And... Two years ago, I've learned the technique of uh, heart breathing, where you're breathing from the heart. Mm. And singing's got breathing in it. Of course. And if you're singing the lyrics of the heart, well, it has to come from the heart. And when you do this, apparently there is a vagus nerve that binds the heart to the brain that gets strengthened. Of course. The more you sing, the the more you become in tune with what happens and... What's of important, course, you know? it's like getting up in the morning and yep. taking your deep breaths and having that moment before you start your day to take the deep breaths and breathe in all the light and all the goodness and then breathe out and ground yourself. It's so yep. important. When I start every workshop, we start with breathing. Take yep. a really deep breath in and hold that breath and let it out. Let go of all the crap and another breath, you know? It's so important to have people's attention for an hour, let alone five minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I know if I haven't done my little bit of practice, in the morning yes. when I get up or whenever I get up because it's not always the morning. If I've done a gig, usually after a show, I'm completely wired because I have i don't drink. Yep. So I get off stage and I have so much energy naturally. And I'll, <laughs> like after my show the other night, yeah, on Saturday. 6.30 a.m. I was still awake. Yeah. And then I woke up at 7.30. Wow. Yeah. So I'm quite tired, but I have all this energy, you know. Um, so I have to ground myself because you have, I have too much energy sometimes and then I get a little bit distracted and... So how do you get rid of that energy then? Uh, sometimes I find it hard. I have my drops in my water. I wear my crystals. I try. What, what do you mean your drops in your I water? I have this um, fab- fabulous, um, they, they come from flower essences. Right. And there's this Australian guy who actually is based out of Canada and he makes them. And I wish I knew the website, but I can send it to you. Yes. Um, and there's all different ones for trauma, for healing your heart, for calming the child. And you put them in your water. Um, and there's just something that really helps you bring it back to, okay, just I've already done it today in my water, mm-hmm, every day, mm-hmm. my calm drops. And you can choose, like they have so many you can choose from and you can put up to, from three different bottles, whatever you choose each day. And then there's another one called lightning grief, which you put under your tongue. And if you're feeling stressed or you've lost somebody or you feel somebody else is upset, you can take it from them. Right. You know what I mean? And that's been a big help for me. Um, sometimes I just have to get up and go. And have a sing, and that is that's what calms me down. Yeah, you know. So if if I was to just do uh, my job, um, <coughs> let, let's imagine I'm, I work in a very stressful environment. How could your singing help me? For you to sing, you mean? Yeah. I think if you came to my workshop and yes. I showed you some things, and you knew how to do that as a practice, and you did it before you had to while you were feeling stressed, even if you took a deep breath and sang for two minutes a day, that's what I tell to my students that want to be singers. I'm not expecting you to go home and practice every day for an hour. That's boring for a lot of people. Go home and just have a sing and just do it every day, whether it's in the shower with the natural reverb, you know, yeah. in the car. Use the muscle and have a release. I think it's really, really, really important. I think there's so many things that happen in our brain psychosomatically that can talk us out of doing it. For example, singers that have a high note in a song will worry about the high note in the song the whole way through the song instead of going before they sing the song turning around just making sure they can get that high note and then being in the song. And you know what? When you're in the song, if you don't get the high note, does it matter? Because you're in the moment and you're telling the story. Yep. It's all about just reaching the high note. That doesn't matter. 
You're going to get it. No, you're going to get it. Don't say before you're going, oh, I'm not going to get it at the high note, because then you won't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The power of the word. You know, I wrote a song recently called Care For What You Wish For, because my mother passed away two years ago. She had terrible cancer, and she got so skinny, I walked into the hospital one day, and she was pulling up her leggings that were too big. Now, all her life, all she wanted to do was have skinny legs. They were too skinny, and she couldn't use them anymore. And she looked at me, and she said, care for what you wish for, darling. So I wrote a song about that. Wow. Because whatever we say, whatever we think, will come true. And what we're given, we've got to be happy with and work with what we've been given. That's what I believe. That's what this song is about. I'll, um, I'll send you a copy of it because okay. I've got a demo version of it. But that's, you know, care for what you wish for, you know. Listen, unfortunately, we don't have too much time because I know that you're just here for a week. You're in, you're out. I mean, I was very fortunate just to have you for Thank you for uh, having a, me. It's a lovely to meet you. But I'm going to ask you, <laughs> now, if... If people can't make it to today or even to tomorrow, I mean, by the time they hear this, this is probably over, but um, what do they do? What what can they do to connect with uh, Danielle DeAndrea? The they can go to the website, which yes. is called LetTheWorldHere.com. Okay, can they can they learn the lessons? They can see everything that I'm posting on Let The World Here with my classes right now. Okay. And then they can know uh, if they can't get to either the ones today. I have two in Coogee tomorrow, yep. all the information on the website, and then I have an adults one in Manly on Thursday night. Yep. And I'll be coming back in May to do a whole lot all around Australia. Okay, I'm so you don't to... teach people on, on the net? No. Okay, so I can't learn I, singing. I, like... I find it too hard. <coughs> I find the connection too hard. There's a delay. When I sing, it breaks up. I, I, I need to see you and be with you. Okay. Yeah. Mm, so you're a bit of a healer. You have to be there with your energy. Yes, and I just feel like having a screen. I'm yelling at the screen and yes. they're yelling back. Yes. And singing is not about yelling. And this is what's happening with singing today. Another thing, because of all those competitions, yes. as great as they are, I'm watching now everybody's singing the same and everybody's yelling and singing at people instead of to them. Would you like to listen to me or you will listen? There's a very big difference. You have to sing to people, not at them. You have to talk to people, not at them. That's what this is about for me. Okay. You know? I, I want to ask you something personal, okay? <clears throat> For me, I meant. What, how do you handle these songs that can be very emotional? I find... And, and, and not burst into tears in the middle of the song, for example, and finish the song. Well, I, I'll give you an example. When I lost my mother in June 2017, yes. I had a big tour planned in Europe the following month. And I went out and organised the funeral and everything, and I said to my stepfather, I'm going to cancel my tour. And he said, darling... Your mother was so excited about the f you were finally going to be singing around the world. Please don't cancel it and go and do it. And I said, okay, really? And he said, go and do it, darling. And let me tell you, every single day I woke up pretty much and had a huge cry and now I'm talking to you about it I'm getting emotional. Right. But as soon as I walked on stage, even if I spoke about my mother, about this next song I wrote for my mother, I would get emotional and it's very hard to sing because you get choked up. Yes. Something would snap when I'd begin the song yes. and it was like she was with me and I sang stronger than I ever did. And I would get through every show and I would get off stage and then cry again. Right. So it's a matter for me, being in the moment, knowing that this is what I'm here to do, taking a moment and a deep breath. And if I do get a bit choked up, the audience can see it and it's real and it's okay. You know what I mean? Yep. That's what I find. Singing is my healing for me. I have to sing all the time. I'm a bit husky right now because I've been singing so much and not yes. had much sleep. But I still have to sing yep. because it's my outlet. And singing, everybody, is better for you than, than talking. Yes. Because when you talk, you talk on your throat. When you sing, you take a breath and you prepare. If you lose your voice, you should never whisper. Whisper is the worst thing you can do. Because whispering pushes the sound through the air. Just relax and don't sing. Just take a time. Be quiet. I also believe people with thyroid problems, it's connected to the throat. Can't speak out, can't sing. You got to have a sing. You got to let it out. You know, really. I think we're all supposed to do it. Wow. Well, Danielle, it's been privileged to um, meet you. I've, uh, I've been I've been a friend of yours on Facebook for many years. Really? You know? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we I'm we actually to communicated meet you. once together. Recently. Uh, no, no, no. Quite, quite a few years oh, ago. Oh, did you? Yes. And then I disappeared from Facebook. Yeah, because, I did too. Uh, I haven't been on there very much. I don't like Facebook it. Because Facebook uh, has done a lot of, uh, <laughs> create oh. some panic and anxiety in me. Oh, yes. And so I, I had to deal with that yeah. before I got back, before I get back. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very, everybody has to remember when you go to those pages on Instagram and Facebook and see what everybody's doing and the life that they're showing that they're living, that's not the true life. Mm -hmm. It's just their good moments of their life. Yeah. And everyone really is dealing with their own stuff. And um, we've got to be careful not to be swept up into that because 
It doesn't matter how many likes you get. How many likes do you like yourself? Yeah. You have to love you. Yeah. You know. e- even worse, you know, it's not even the number of likes now. When they wake up and they don't see that person not liking it, just that one person. Oh, darling, Who cares? They got two million, but I know, that one. <laughs> darling, I know. I, 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 because of that video on Crazy, yeah. Yeah. I made the mistake one day of reading some of the comments. And I was like, oh, but people are so mean. Wow. And so untrue. And what they're saying is awful. Yeah. And I've got to stop reading it because so many other people just love it. And it's just someone behind their screen who's bitter or got their own issues or whatever's going on that are trying to bring you to their level. And I don't want to be at that level. No. You know what I mean? So they, they can if they have more than four million for a song, okay? What? If they have four million views for a song, they still do it. then maybe they can. <laughs> because they probably want, because they'll know the, the hard work that's gone behind that voice to get that four million It's views. not even that. It's just that their, their opinion of what might have happened, why the bass player pulled out his thing early. Oh, because like they, they write the most awful stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Oh, now that you age, said it, I might have to go about in there. About my age, <laughs> about um, some people terrible, how te- what a terrible singer I am. Like terrible things, which is, you know, when you, this is what you do. And if you take it to heart, you can be really affected by it. But I know that I'm really good at what I do. Yeah. Without being a big head, I know I'm good at what I do. I know I can stand up on stage and sing from my heart and make people feel good. And that's what it's about to me. If I can connect to one person in the audience, then I've done my job. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's how I feel. So to those <coughs> people, I will sing this. Go and stuff yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Have a sing. You'll feel better, honestly. Just, just sing. Thank you so much for Thank today. So I'm much. sure we're going to catch up many, many times. Oh, because I think that... Um, I think each time I come out, we should catch up. Even more. We'll see. Oh, really? Like, d- today with technology, there's so many oh, things true. that you can Absolutely. do. Absolutely, yes. Because yes, yes. I, I would love to have maybe a little bit more of what you have before you get out here so that people can really sure. start warming sure. up you know, right. to the idea. All right. And if the people are listening now, yeah. if you want to go to the Let the World Hear You page on Instagram or my yeah. own, Daniel D'Andrea yeah. page on Instagram, you can actually see from the first workshop, there's an actual snippet of us all singing I saw together. That, yeah. And I've had so many people write to me because of that. Because we're singing about love and everybody sounds wonderful and they were all terrified. And that was within 20 minutes. That's great stuff. You know? Thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much, darling.